Hey class, it's Professor Nick Sensky at UNC Charlotte, and uh, this is a supplemental video for advanced uh, digital methods. This is for project two. Um, this is the, the project where we take an object, an industrial object, and we've modeled it in Rhino, and then we're gonna cut it apart, and we're gonna explode it and arrange it in an interesting way. And one of the things you might need to know how to do uh, to display it uh, in an interesting way is how to light something uh, in this manner uh, in V-Ray. You can see like this object has kind of been placed um, on the floor or maybe on a wall and there's just a subtle kind of halo shadow around it. It's not casting a shadow from like a direct light. You don't you don't see like a shadow coming off of one side like for instance. It's just kind of um, lit in a really even way almost the way that you'd have like a light box or something like that. So I want to kind of show you guys how to make a quick light box in uh, V-Ray and um, so basically you can export this uh, pretty quickly. Okay, So I'm using Rhino 4 but uh, Rhino 5 in the lab says V-Ray, whichever, whichever way you want to, uh, to get access to V-Ray. Um, if, if we don't have it in Rhino 5 you can always save your file from Rhino 5 to Rhino 4 open it up in 4 and that should also have uh, that should also have you know like V-Ray so I had this model of a car body that I kind of sawed in half and I could just kind of splay it so if you look at it in top view this is what we're seeing here okay and primarily we're going to use the top um, camera but it's always a good idea to just save a camera of the view that you're going to be using so you can always you can always get the exact same proportions and you get things to, to work. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put down some kind of a background piece, and this might be kind of big, but whatever. So you, you want to put something down underneath it, right? That is going to act like this this white field, this white background here. You need something to cast shadows on. So, and you probably want it to be not overlapping, but certainly not like hovering above it. Okay. So we've got that. Then you go into V-Ray materials, M here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and basically the default V-Ray material is this kind of gray. Uh, and it's just set up. It's just kind of like a just sort of like a diffuse material. Uh, in order to make a new material, you can duplicate that material. So I'm not default VRA material one. You can rename it. I, I'm going to call this a uh, white mat. Okay. Go into the diffuse. Change the color to uh, white. And you can leave everything else uh, as it is. Okay. Then I can duplicate the mat material. And uh, I could go in and make a make a light gray material, and I can rename it <clears throat> uh, gray. Yeah. And if I wanted to, I could probably delete these other, uh, or just sort of like remove them. Okay, um, let's make sure I've got everything here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I've got two materials. I've got a gray and a white. And you could you could make more colors. Uh, you could make things that have a bit more like uh, shine to them if you'd if you'd like. I'm just keeping this pretty uh, pretty simple for now. Um, you can also you can also load other V-Ray materials. Um, you can say like add material or like import material. And you can go ahead and open up all these different things. But I'm just using regular matte materials. You can go nuts downloading materials or, or using the standard materials that come with V-Ray. That's fine. Okay, so then I want to apply the material. So I want the background to be white. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, click on, I'm going to do F3. It's going to open up my properties pane here. Um, I'm going to go to material, assign by plugin, and then I browse and I want to say, okay, you're white. I don't know why I did that, but okay. And then let's double check here. Yeah, white mat. Okay, you can tell. Okay, and then I'm gonna click these guys. Oops. Actually, okay. So here's the trick. I'm gonna select all. So Control A, and then I'm gonna deselect the background. So hit Control and click that. And then I've just got these selected. I'm gonna go to plugin. I'm gonna say browse. I wanted to make you gray mat. I 
again it dropped okay double check gray mat great okay so I've got this and then the last thing I want to do uh, with the scene is put a light in and the kind of light I want to do is a is a is a large um, like area light basically I want to do a rectangular light okay and this is like kind of like the, what they use in Hollywood you'll see these big giant like square kind of like reflectors what they do is they send a lot of light um, in a square area that's really like diffuse okay so you don't get those sharp shadows so I want to make a rectangular light it says uh, location location is going to be in the center here oops actually that starts drawing from the upper left right uh, upper left corner so we'll just do it like this I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger than my uh, than my background okay so got it go to front view you can see a little arrow the little normal arrow that's pointing in the direction that the light is being cast and then I basically am gonna put it I'm gonna do it basically so that if you look at it it almost draws like a square Okay, and then I can go in and I can go into light properties and you can see the intensity is on, the color is white, multiplier, it's scalar. Um, I'm gonna make it invisible uh, and all these other things. Make sure you check shadows. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, go back to my camera. Okay, now I got it. And I'm gonna go into uh, V-Ray options. And I'm going to open up, I'm going to load, I'm going to V-Ray Express, and I'm going to do V-Ray Express. Uh, for now, I'm going to do medium just so I can tune it. And let's see here. And if you do that, you actually don't, you have to make sure, you know, make sure shadows is turned on. I'm assuming that you opened up your thing and you started doing this. So your settings should be pretty much the default. The only thing you want to mess with is probably the output. So you, you when you when you want to do your final, you want to change, you want to override the output, and you want to make it a 1600 by 1200 or 2000. You want to make it very large, basically, um, and then you have to make sure to save the file somewhere, like on your desktop or something like that. Okay, so that's that's the part we want to look at later. Uh, output environment's the one we want to be playing with here. And environment is the is the skylight, so it's the light that just comes from the environment itself. And that's going to affect the final quality of the image. The other thing that's going to affect it is going to be the light properties here. Okay, so we're going to be tuning these a little bit. Um, I'm just going to do this view. Uh, it's going to render this at this size. It's going to be small enough for us for it to render fast, but enough for us to get detail. And let's just go ahead and click render. All right, let's go ahead and hit render and see what we get. Ah, I'm in the wrong view here. Okay, let's do it again. <clears throat> All right, see, pretty good. So you can see that the light gray material gives us a good amount of contrast, like where we have bits of shadow and we have like a slight kind of halo around the uh, edge of the shadow. We could we could kind of tweak this in Photoshop a little bit to kind of bring out more of the more of the contrast, but I think we can do a little bit better job with it um, in um, inside Rhino. So let's let's tweak it a little bit here. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to um, increase the multiplier here to 1.5 and I'm going to decrease the background uh, multiplier to 0.25 and what this is going to do is it's going to create a harsher light from the um, rectangular light and that's going to create a darker shadow and uh, a more a more uh, intense shadow I should say and then we reduce the skylight which has actually been blowing out the shadow and that's going to give us a better uh, shadow hopefully fingers crossed all right You can, you can kind of tell here, you can see that it's actually getting a little bit more around those edges there. Let me try, let me just try it with without. I might have actually too much, too much light. Rendering is an iterative process as we've described, as we've discussed like many times. Ah, actually, yeah, I, I had too much light there. So you can see there's kind of a sweet spot. Probably have too much shadow now, okay. 
Um, another thing you can do is, so you can see how it's kind of got this, got this, got this kind of bloom around it. Like it's actually got too much. One thing you can do is, if you move the light piece further away, the rays are going to travel farther, and they're going to they're going to actually tighten up around the object. Oops. Make sure you're in the right right view. I mean, once you've got this set up, yes, yeah, so you look at that. So I would say somewhere between the two is kind of the sweet spot. Yeah, again. There you go. There, that's not too bad. Um, if you feel like it's too dark, you can always increase the uh, the skylight a bit, and again, that'll kind of that'll kind of blow some of it out uh, for you. So, those are your variables. I mean, you can play with the intensity of the light, the intensity of the skylight, and the distance of the um, of the uh, of the light plane. But that kind of gets us, you know, with with some tweaking, gets us sort of closer to this. You can see it's pretty it's pretty subtle. So and I think it's actually because their background is a bit darker. So the their shadow kind of blends in more. When you're ready to uh, do the final, go ahead and go to uh, load. You can do very high or high. I actually find better results of high. Go to your output. You can override your output, you know, give it a big size, give it a file. And I usually do like a TIFF. And then you click render. And that's going to give you a big, a big output. And you give yourself time, like depending upon how complex your model is, how fast your computer is, this might take you a while. This rendering might take you a while. Okay. You can see this is going to crunch for a lot longer than the other, the other version. You can see the sampling, you know, that's kind of creating a halo around it. You're going to get more detail when you go to a larger image size. You just are. And that actually might help you. Um, it might improve the quality of the shadows as well, just the fact that there's more information there. You can see it takes considerably longer when you have a larger, uh, a larger image size. All right, now we should start rendering pretty soon here. Oh, still sampling. Higher uh, like vis ops, you know, when you when you go to a higher level, are gonna are gonna actually create more more samples. There we go. Okay, so I'm actually finding a problem with this already that we're not we're not seeing that shadow. Oh, you know why? This is a this is a trick. This is something that that is a uh, is a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the uh, stop the rendering here. When you load a new VizOp file, it is going to mess up your settings. Yeah, our environment settings are are back to uh, one. So, gotta be careful with that. That's actually a really good thing to catch. Okay, let's go back to the rendering and do a new version here. We had the samples for the shadow, but the light was being blown out by the contributions of the background light, of the uh, of the skylight, I should say. Yeah, you look, look at that. Even the background's getting like darker, darker samples. Yeah, be careful with that stuff. Once you've got your setup, though, once you have everything ready, go ahead and save your file, right? And it's going to preserve all those settings in V-Ray. Now we're going to start rendering here. Okay. There's our shadow.
you know, white might be too much contrast, uh, but you could always, um, you could always adjust that material. Now, I should say, too, this is not a very good surface. Um, this is something I pulled off a website. It does not have thickness. Um, there's actually some some of the surfaces are actually coincident so there's surfaces on top of surfaces and that creates some really weird shadow leaks and things but gives you an idea of what kinds of shadows these things will produce when you uh, when you do this light box technique it's looking pretty good though might have a little bit too much shadow I think the more I think the more objects you have, like the more the more complex they are, especially when they start projecting into the Z. I think you're going to get some really interesting effects um, out of these, uh, you know, forms. Um, one thing that I like is actually what happens in this kind of wheel whale here. There's this kind of um, you can see the kind of shadow of, of of this surface here. So I think that's really nice. It kind of shows you what's going on in the Z axis of this form. You can see it. You can see it here too. But you could do this, you could add make 2D lines to it, or just kind of faint lines to kind of accentuate the contours of the object in, in, in addition to the shadows. Um, that would be a really nice addition. Um, but anyway, this is the basic technique for that light box. Um, there are lots of other uh, ways to, to construct your project, as I, as I showed in a lecture uh, two weeks ago. Um, so don't don't you don't have to do your project this way. Um, the lighting can be similar though. I mean, you could you could still use a rectangular light, uh, but you you may arrange your objects differently. Um, they may not cast shadows on something, but they may be self shadowing, right? Depending upon how you want to render the scene. So anyway, this is a good technique for you know, displaying these objects. Um, if you have any questions, uh, send me an email. Thanks.